welcome to Legion Outpost and today we are going to be talking on Solo. Uh, this video comes because of a request that somebody had in the uh, comments of my YouTube channel. They made a comment, uh, why do I like playing Han Solo as a Rebel player? Because I made a comment that I really enjoy playing Han Solo. So this video is in response to why I play Han Solo, how I play him, and what I think makes him decent. Now, here's the thing. I could very easily say, you know, if you look at all the statistics and the odds for, for him, that he is not a good leader. Um, I can look at that and I can say that because he does not stack up to other other leaders. But I always like to say, don't tell me the odds. And let's take a look at him. Now, he came out early on in the uh, World of Legion. He was the second leader expansion um, for the Rebels. And he came out at the same time as the Commandos. And that's why he's dressed in the, the garb they dressed him in. Uh, the reality is, when he first came out, he kind of did suck. He's what we had. We had Luke, we had Leia, we had him. Uh, Han and Chewie, actually, they came together. Um, and I really think if you're going to be buying, uh, playing Han... Uh, putting him into your list, you need to put Chewie in the list. But we'll get to that in a minute. So when he first came out, he was about 120, 125 points. I don't know exactly. I put his old card up there. Um, he had some things, but really with his new card and the improvements to low profile, uh, adding gun, uh, he had Gunslinger, but he adding Steady to it uh, made him a little more playable. Now, the problem with Han is, um, because of the way they've changed the, the rules of cover, he kind of has lessened his playability again. Because it's hard to get somebody out in the open and, and uh, get a clean shot on him. So if you're playing him for killing people, um, he can be good at it because of the Pierce 2. But cover negates, so you're basically fishing for crits all the time with Han. Um, so you really want to get those crits going. And so uh, he has some things that can help him with that. Uh, let's just go over his card really quickly. He's cheap now, cheaper. He's 100 points. I think he probably could go down another 5 points and he'd be even better. But if we don't want to keep knocking points down, there could be some simple little things that you could add. You could add a, a, a sharpshooter too. Uh, but then he'd pretty much instant hit if he gets a roll. So all oh, the sharpshooter one's not bad, uh, but you are fishing for crits. So he comes with low profile, which is making him much more reliable uh, in in staying alive because he only throws a white dice, defense dice like most of the rebels. Uh, but this way, if you get him in heavy cover, as long as people don't have sharpshooter two, um, he's gonna have at least um, cover and plus one. Because uh, most people have sharp shoot one, cover plus one, so two negate. But if he gets hovering cover, there's no sharper, that's cover three, which is, takes away a lot of small dice pool, pools, which makes him defensively decent. Gunslinger is great because you can shoot at two different targets, uh, and it allows you to really be able to pick away at things. And if you got something in the open or available to like I, I find him really he's really good at getting rid of units like uh why am i stopping for a second uh units like um speeder bikes which have cover one and he's got sharpshooter brings it down to zero cover he throws two reds which is pretty good and if he gets those two hits they're pierce and so his gunslinger allows him to do things like that but the range two is a problem too uh, so some people say, well, give him range three. I think the real answer is not adding another sharpshooter, not adding anything else, but maybe adding a white dice. White dice isn't going to hit a lot, but it gives you that chance to maybe roll three to get blocked the one white dice for cover. Um, you're getting a two and eight chance of getting an extra hit. I think a white dice would really satisfy him really well and make him a perfect uh like better and more reliable and more people would play him for his damage output. But I don't think if you're playing Han Solo for damage output, you're not playing him right. So this is what I want to get to is Han's not there for damage output. Let's, let's move on from Gunslinger. Uh, the next thing is Sharpshooter 1, which I talked about a bit. It brings it down um, the cover, which is handy. But Uncanny Luck is another defensive thing, and it's really handy too because there's times when I had three hits coming in at me. I, I whiffed on them, and I rolled three of my Uncanny Luck hits and got them all three saves. And, and I was like, whoa, white saves doesn't always happen. 
but you get that chance to reroll and get an extra chance at it. Or maybe you hit block one and you get an extra one, and that's always a bonus when you're doing white saves. Uh, so that's Han Solo in a nutshell, and I believe he did shoot first just to stop the, the myth of he might not have shot first or whatever. He shot first. Come on. We all know it. He shot first. So, but how do you play Han to make him worthwhile? Well, I think it's important that you understand what Han's value is and what it is that he can do that other people can't do. So let's take a look at Han for a second. And here it is. First thing is Han has Chewie. You have to play Chewie when you play Han, in my opinion. You, you, some people might want, not want to do that, but I think that they're so good together that it just helps play them. Uh, first of all, um, Chewie, decent price. His price is a little lower. In range four is pretty cool. He doesn't get the thing. Uh, and he does get a chance to be enraged really quickly. Uh, he's Guardian three, and that keeps Han and other units alive that are squishy and Chewie is squishy himself. He rolls a white dice with no defensive surge. Um, scale is kind of wasted now. Uh, I think scale is, needs to be reworked. If AMG, if you're listening to this, uh, you need to rework scale to make it a little bit better than it is uh, because it was such a cool thing before. So maybe just even extending the distance to their full speed because uh, climb is so easy now. Teamwork is the key with Chewie and Han Solo. It is a really good keyword. It, it allows them to share dodges and aim. So anytime one of them gets an aim, the other one's going to get it. Or anytime someone gets a dodge, they're going to get it. And so if you staple up close and personal on Han Solo and you allow him to use that card, when he takes a, a shot at somebody, he gets a dodge and therefore Chewie's going to get a dodge. Well, because of Han Solo has Gunslinger, he gets to take two shots. You're giving two dodges to each of them, and which gives them real survivability for white save guys who don't have a good survivability alone without that. And so those are some of the things you, you think about when you're thinking about taking Han, you need to think about taking Chewie. Uh, Chewie needs to take Protector because Protectors allows him to take away the crits um, and use them for uh, in Guardian. And so that, that really allows him to make a difference for helping um, keep softer units alive and as a rebel you know there's a lot of soft units the other thing i think is a very important thing to staple on these guys is prepare supplies prepared supplies gives them that automatic dodge that they can use once and allows them to just kind of be a little bit safe if they didn't get to go first but the key to han solo what makes him the leader that i like so much and why i play him in almost all my builds lately uh and and most people say well no han's statistically bad um, the odds are that Han's really not good. Remember I said, don't tell me the odds. Here's the thing. The reality is Han is good because of his cards. Uh, there is so many good cards that he has. His, his command cards are really good. Uh, sorry about that mess. Uh, great card. Remember he shot first. Uh, allows him to go first no matter what. When you need to go first, Han goes first because his card's a zero pip. It counts as a one pip when building, but it's a zero pip, which really makes it uh, a big thing. Now, the other one is change of plans. You can really mess with somebody by uh, playing change of commands and forcing them to put their, their command card back, um, and then you get your card back. This really is good against Vader or anybody who gets like a, a permanent buff. Um, you can force that permanent buff back in and cause them to rethink about how they're going to play that. Uh, it also works really good against bombardments and things that they need a long range for and it throws them off and their timing and and so that can be really good. And then you have Chewie's 3 pip which is notorious scoundrels which is which is um, really good because you can take back any of Han Solo's cards and play them again. Uh, so it allows you to be able to play them. I've often played uh, Change of Plans and they come back with Notorious Scoundrels. Uh, or the cream of all cards, the best card, and the reason I play Han Solo above all is um, Ruthless Diversions. And this card is amazing because it gives an order to people. And the two people that it gives an order to are the only unit that people can attack if able to. Remember the word, if able to. 
um, during the round while they have a face-up order token. So you can just sit back and keep it on if you want to keep Han on, and you can keep Chewie sucking back the wounds. Um, but the key isn't with Han and Chewie. It helps when you're playing in Ewok Village. They, it's a great way to keep your Ewoks alive um, and allow your Ewoks to advance. And and so that's that's really good if you're playing Bright Tree Village. But the ultimate thing is, hey, who defensive? So who is it that you can play with them that is very defensive? And so that's what you got to start thinking about when you're picking Han Solo and who you want to go and how do you make him even better? Well, here's a couple people that could work well um, that I suggest that might be a, a different change. You could play with Shabin Ran because she's red saves and she also surges saves. So she's got good defensive uh, mechanics already in it. She's nimble. So she's get her dodges back. And so if you pop it on her, you might be able to keep her alive and pop a dodge on her and, and you put her shields on her. And then you also put up close and personal, which gives her even more defensive or maybe a Jedi. Jedis also who are, are uh, red saves. Uh, they don't have surge defense but if you put an, a dodge on them they do get that with that um, and you can play them with force barrier which protects the other units around them and then you uh, put force reflexes getting that dodge on them uh, the problem is you got to trigger force reflexes um, but Ahsoka she has independent dodge so she plays well and she likes having a lot of dodges and there's a lot of waves getting her dodges so she plays well with han in this situation in these cards but the problem with the force users is that they're, they're kind of um command card hungry so it's like man i'm playing them but i'm going to play han's command cards and chewy so that's four cards right there and maybe han's twice so that's five cards then you don't get all those great uh force user cards and force users aren't the greatest to play with anyways um and I like to play things that other people aren't really playing with. That's the kind of the way I like it. I like to see, hey, what else is not being played a lot? And so when you think defensive, the probably the most defensive commander in the game. Yeah, I said it. Most defensive commander in the game, even though it's a white save, white saves we know, very likely not going to save, but saves the crit. So she has a two in six chance of, of saving. Um, but it is Jyn Erso. Jyn Erso's got duck and cover. Um, sorry, not tech to cover. She got quick thinking, which gives her aim and dodge. Doesn't proxy in this turn when you're you're putting him, because uh, you have to keep the the order token on. But she has defensive um, uh, danger sense. You know, four, which allows her to take up to four suppression to get four extra dice in defense. So say somebody throws two hits on her, she's got good cover she you're on it you want to keep her in cover if you're going to do this card just put it so two away right away but she throws two hits on her you get two hits through well now you can roll maybe up to four dice extra so you're rolling six dice for a chance to get rid of those two hits which is really good she can infiltrate not that ha handy but she's got nimble she's got sharpshooter but that's not defensively but um she gets her her weapon card for free now uh she's not expensive but if you're going to play her like this you have to take these upgrades you have to take prepared supplies to get her that dodge to pop proxy nibble um and just keep that going you need duck and cover to give her that guaranteed extra cover always having cover but not only that giving her suppression which allows her to trigger danger sense and then you put a steam leader on her and so that allows her um if she does take wounds before she takes wounds she can pass them off onto somebody else uh, so she's not always rolling dice and so you can literally have a, two troops of Ewoks around here or I like using Ewoks and fleet troopers around her um, fleet troopers I put in in standby so when somebody moves in to attack her they get to attack uh, causing them a little bit of hey, hesitation to move in uh, but Ewoks I have six bodies and they can just take wounds if you put three uh, Ewoks and a fleet trooper around her um, that gives you a a base of about 16 extra hits damage she can take in a round uh through multiple attacks and so it's pretty good especially when they can only shoot at those people if they if you play it right and you lay it out so they can only have they always have one of the two at the targets um and chewy covering stuff it allows you to be very defensive tech i've once triggered that and i had um nine suppression on her by the end of the round uh, just because of the way it worked, because so many people were attacking her, and she 
took one hit out of all those and one damage and it just worked out and then I was able to trigger it again use the card twice because of Chewy's things and it just let me tank a lot of hits now where this comes into problems is when you're playing somebody who has big dice pools so you're looking at like uh, the clones you're looking at the shadow collective uh, when they have huge dice pools this can be a little risky because if you don't block anything you could die right away. Uh, I was playing against Shadow Collective in the tournament and literally um, Maul jumped in and killed her one shot before I even got to use the card. Uh, but the problem was he didn't think he was going to kill her. He was hoping for cover from her and he was in the middle of my whole army. I ended up winning that battle, but I lost her early because she's not good against um, melee combat. So that being said, that's kind of the way I like to play them. And I'm going to just show you a couple lists I built, uh, one each way, one with the force user. Uh, so the first list we'll go over is, of course, Han Chewie. Then we go with Ahsoka um, and force barrier and force reflexes, tenacity and defensive stance. Then we go with Ewoks. Ewoks are great for taking hits, just allowing them to die. We got two units of Ewok, one unit of Rebel Troopers with a medic, uh, my favorite Rebel Veterans with their heavy gun, and then a medium blaster and a laser turret with, followed up with two units of Ewok Slingers, uh, sorry, one unit of Ewok Slingers, which gives you a lot. But see, the problem with Force users, and they're not strong in some things, um, the problem with Force users is that they take up a lot of points. And I told you earlier, they're command card hungry. Uh, so let's look at the other way I place them. And I, Han Solo, Chewie, uh, Chewie Walk, Skirmishers, one with the axe, just so if it does get into combat, it can actually do some real damage. One Rebel Veterans with the uh, heavy gun, uh, one uh, medium blaster trooper, uh, one laser turret with just a uh, barrage and then another laser turret with a barrage and the uh, link target array to give you an AX aim and then two units of scrimmagers, Jyn Ursel, the way I told you she was built there and then fleet troopers because I like using standby and nobody likes standby but hey they want to fire it off they can't fire it off because they have to fire at Jin. and so you got that range and so that's just how I like to play them um, and so that's why I like Han and Chewie. The, as I said, Han and Chewie, because I think they are a pair. I think you got to kind of go with them. And so to wrap this all up, you can't look at a unit and just say, well, they don't do damage and say they're not worth it. You have to look at all the cards and all the things they can do. And sometimes, especially being a Rebel player, it's not about doing, dealing the damage. Um, it's about doing the mission, and I always say to everybody, play the objective, play the objective, play the objective. And so that's why I like Han. Um, I find him good for playing the objectives. And he's really good against the meta I see a lot, which is kind of a lot of speeder bikes. So thank you guys for watching this. If you made it this far, thank you. If you hit up a like, subscribe, and make a comment, You'll be entered into our next draw, draw for, for some cool cards and some cool promo. And we got some a whole bunch of other things going on right now. And thank you for listening, and I'll see you again. May the Force be with you.